Okay, guys, so let's go ahead and start it. It's already 17 minutes late, so we're going to probably have to extend a little more. So I'm logged into the Salesforce account here. And as you can see in the last demo session, if you remember, we created this Salesforce account. So what we're going to do here today is we're going to talk about some of the uh, company's profile and all the things that as a system admin you're supposed to do. So first thing is the application security uh, is very important in case of Salesforce because this, since Salesforce is a cloud-based application, it's running on the uh, browser, using a browser, then the security becomes a very big concern for the Salesforce come up users. So Salesforce has developed various different techniques to secure the platform and also reduce the chances of unauthorized people getting the access to the company's important information. So there are different different ways they they uh, kind of different ways that they follow in order to not in order to stop the access for the unauthorized users. Um, is my voice not clear for everyone? You sound fine. Did okay. Okay. So, um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and talk about a few things in this lecture. We're going to start with the Salesforce setup menu, which is basically everything in Salesforce is controlled through the menu. Then we're going to look at some user login and authorization permissions. And then we have we're going to take a look at company profile means how to change the uh, user, the company settings like physical years and uh, the time zone for a company's currency kind of information. So all that is controlled through the company's profile. And then we're going to take a look at the user interface. User interface means how things will appear to you when you log into Salesforce. So the first thing is the Salesforce setup menu. So whenever you go ahead and log into a Salesforce account, you will see the setup menu. If you do not see the setup menu, depending upon what your company settings is, if you do not see the setup menu, that is controlled through something called as user interface. So some people might see the setup menu right here, or some people might see the setup menu over here, like below this drop box. That depends on the, that is controlled by the user interface settings. So what does that mean is let's say if you wanted to go ahead and change this user interface setting, it's just like giving you a quick overview of this one. So here, these are the settings of the user interface. So you can control things like, how do you want your setup menu to look? So this is this particular checkbox is responsible for do you want the setup to be appear here or do you want it under the drop down? So based on what is this checkbox is checked or not, your setup menu will go away. So right now, since I unchecked that setup permission, so no longer I see the setup menu. If you wanted to access the setup menu, you will access through here. So since you're a system admin and you will be using a lot of this setup menu every time, so what will happen? You wanted to make sure that setup menu has a link available separately instead of going to the drop down and then going for the setup menu. So this particular thing is controlled through the this particular thing is controlled through the user interface. This is just giving you a little bit idea like how things are done. So let me go back here and save it. So now the setup menu appears here. So make sure guys, you see the setup menu right away here when you log in. If you do not see, it might be because of the checkbox is not checked. So this is the first place every system admin is going to look at. And this is the setup menu. If you wanted to expand all the tabs, you can click on this expand all button and you will be able to see all the different tabs that are available. If you wanted to go ahead and collapse all, you can do that. If you're trying to search for something, you do not even have to remember where each link is available you can just type in few letters and it will pop up things for you so if you wanted to go ahead and access the users you can click on you can write in the search box user and you'll be able to see all this user related data so now next thing we're going to do has organizations have different methods of accessing the salesforce crm application you can access the Salesforce application just like we are doing it through the browser. There's also a way like an API way, like an Apex data loader, we'll, we'll see what it is. And through a desktop client or for mobile application as well. Means if you go to your mobile, you can type in salesforce.com. So there are different ways 
of accessing the Salesforce, right? You can log in in the browser, you can have a Salesforce through the mobile. So there are different ways you can come to this particular page. So whenever a, whenever a user try to make the access to the Salesforce by one of these methods, you the Salesforce authorizes the user. He checks, is this use a Salesforce checks? Is this user allowed to log into Salesforce or not? Okay. So there are different, different ways. Depending upon the first way we have is the login. Okay. Is the user IP address is allowed or not? Okay. So first thing we're going to check is is the user IP address is allowed to log in. And then there is a way like login time. So if let's say a company wants to, let's say if a company wants not, want, does not allow the users to access the Salesforce CRM app, or the organization application outside of the working hours. So let's say you, they only wanted to restrict users to access Salesforce from eight to five. Okay, eight to five only on the weekdays. So they, all these things can be done using the sales and by the Salesforce admin. Are you guys following me so far? Yes, Deepika. Am I too fast? No. Okay, good. So, because I talk fast, I just want to make sure. So whenever a login, whenever a user tries to log in, these are the some of the checks Salesforce makes before allowing, allowing them, allowing him the access. So if the IP that the user is trying to log in is not under the selected range of the company's IP, then that particular user will not be given access. If a particular user of the application, if the user is logging into the Salesforce application outside of the working hours or whatever the time the company has set up, that only these are the times that they can log in. And if he's trying to log in out of that, then he will not be allowed to access. And also you will have seen like when you try to log into Salesforce, sometimes if the cookies are disabled, like or if, if you have deleted the cookies, then you have to basically verify yourself again. So if the particular user does not have a Salesforce cookie in the browser store, then also he might not be able to access the Salesforce. So let's go ahead and look at the login hour restrictions. So first thing we're going to look at is the login hour restrictions. So what is this? In order to access the login hour, each profile the user has, as I already told you, every user in Salesforce has a particular profile. And through that profile, we define the login hours. So let's say if you are a standard user or if you are a Salesforce admin or whoever you are, under the profiles, you will see a place called login hour restrictions. So if you go to the profiles here, and let's say we click on the standard user profile. Okay, so we go to the, we clicked on the S and we clicked on the standard user profile. So let's go ahead and click here. And there is a place where it's called the login hours. Okay, so this is where you get control the login hours. So let's say if you wanted to make sure that your company users only access the, this particular application from 8 a.m. to 5 a.m., you can go ahead and specify that time as well. And if you do not want users to access on a weekends, then you can also remove the act. You can also say that, okay, these people are not allowed during this period of time. So if you do not want to have any restrictions, you can just click on clear times and it will basically clear, clear all the times here. So these are basically the days and hours that users with this profile are allowed to log in. Okay. And make these times that you select here are the based on the time zone of the company. Okay, so, so login hours will be applied as those exact times, even for different time zones. So how you select the time zone? Time zone is selected by the company's information. We're going to look at that. So whatever time you have selected here, like on Monday to 8 a.m. to 5 a.m. or whatever it is based on your company's standards, so they will not be, they will only be allowed the access to the Salesforce application in, in between those time zones. Usually companies do not do that because they don't want users to have restrictions based on the time. So what will be the default time zone? Default time zone will be accessed by the company information profile here. So if you go to the setup and you go and type in here company information, 
So this is where you go, company information. And here you have something called as time zone. So this is the default time zone of the company. So it's the, pac the Pacific daytime. If you wanted to go ahead and change the time zone, you can do through here. You can select whatever time zone that you wanted to select here. So based on what is the default time zone, the timings under that particular profile will be taken from this, will be based on off of this time zone. Now, the next thing we have is the IP address restriction. So let's say if you are trying to access from outside of the, your company's IP addresses range. So let's say whenever you are in a, you know, you're in an office, you will see that a lot of all the people in there have a particular IP address, okay? And that is in the range of the company's IP addresses. So they will basically will be from, let's say, something like this, 85 to, it, it, it looks like this, IP addresses are 54. So this is how an IP address looks like. So every profile, you can also set what are the IP ranges that they are allowed to access. So if you go back to the profiles again, if you go to the profiles again, and if you click on any of the profiles, let's take the standard user, and these are the login IP ranges. Okay, these are the login IP ranges. Since we have not provided any IP range, so users from any IP address are able to log into the, to the system. So if you wanted to specify the IP range, you can specify here. So if you say that, okay, from this particular range only, I'm going to allow my users to access. If somebody is trying to access outside of this range, then I'm not going to go ahead and give them the access. So this is what you can specify the login IP ranges here. I'm not going to do it because I don't want to do it. So we're going to just go ahead. So we have login times. We have also seen how, what are the IP ranges. And uh, now we're going to go ahead and take a look at the Next thing we have is the IP, the cookies that I was talking about. So a cookie is nothing but a small file that contains a string of characters that are sent to your computer when you visit a particular website. So whenever you go to a particular website, they kind of give you a cookie. And if you have enabled cookies in your browser, that particular information will be stored onto your machine. And whenever you're going to go ahead and visit that same website again, the cookie will allow that site to recognize your web browser. Okay, you, all, you must have already been know what cookies are. So similarly, the browser will also have the Salesforce cookie if you have, if as a user you have previously accessed the browser to log into the Salesforce. So that way, if they were able to find your Salesforce cookie, they will be able to allow you to access the Salesforce application. Any questions so far? Okay. No, no, Deepika. Okay, what about others? Sakina, Vishali, Kiran, Nasheen. It's fine, Deepika, so far. No, I'm fine. I'm Nasheen. Fine, Deepika. Uh, okay, everyone is yeah, fine. I'm fine. Uh, Deepika, it's good. Yes. Yes. Uh, page layouts are restricted to the user or how is it? Page layouts? Yeah, page layouts are like, you know, uh, user login based or it's common for everyone. Like if you're talking about if you go to a particular object and you go ahead and look at the... Uh, it's not based on the... So depending upon what fields that user is allowed to see. So let's say you have created a page layout for a cases record. Let's say you go here, and this is what your uh, record looks like or something like that. So based upon what kind of fields he's allowed to access, that is going to control what, what things you're going to see on the page layout. Does that make sense? Okay, so whatever, like we can restrict the page layouts, like, or we can assign the page layouts based on what user want to see, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you.
Okay, so the next thing we're going to go ahead and take a look at is the company's profile. So company profile, whenever your, your company decides on using Salesforce, then what we do is we basically, for the first time, you have to do these settings. Okay, so like what is the company's physical year? What is the time zone of the company? All this information we're going to set up. This is only done once, once your company is setting up or is using Salesforce CRM application. So the company profile contains the information for your organization within Salesforce, like the system sign up, etc. Company information, contact details, the default language for the company, locale and time zone, license information, physical year, and currencies and exchange rates. So these are the few of the information a company profile stores. So what we have here is the company information and primary contact details, all these are controlled with the company settings, the default time zone, locale, licenses. So Salesforce charges the total number of licenses. They do not charge you by the active licenses. The uh, active users, they charge you by the total number of licenses your, your organization has asked from Salesforce. So they charge you on the number of licenses. Then they also, you can set up the physical year. All these things are done through the company profile and currencies, like a single currency mode or a multi-currency mode. If you, if you enable the single currency mode, that means across, no matter if your company is in India or Australia, it long, it's only going to show you in the US dollars. If, if you have a single currency and you're only enabled US dollars in it. In multiple currencies, what more, what happens is, Users based on what uh, based on their own country, they can change it, what currency they want to see the data in and exchange it. So all these things are controlled with the company profile. So let's take a look at one by one. So first thing is the company information and the primary account details. So how to change that? So when you when your company signs up with the sales force, the information provided is written here. So we go ahead and type in company information. So this is all your, whenever you logged in, whenever you created an account with Salesforce, some of the information got, they asked you to capture. And based on that, they have, they have filled up these fields. So if you wanted to go ahead and change the, you can specify the address, location, et cetera here. This is the time zone. This is the language. If you wanted to choose from any different, like uh, any, these are the options that you can pick. And uh, default locale, since I'm in US, so it's gonna pick up the US one. Currency locale, the US currency dollars. If you are in India or anything, then you can go ahead and switch to one of those. So based on where your company's headquarters are, they usually set up based on that. Now we have is the licenses. So there are basically three different types of licenses are there. One we have is called as the user license. The second one we call it as the feature license. These are the different types of licenses. And the third one we have is the permission set license. So what is a user license? User license is basically entitles the user to a different functionality within Salesforce and basically tells them what profiles they can have access to. So a lot of time you have seen when you are creating users, let's go back. So a lot of time we will see if you go ahead and change it. Based upon what license you have, you have certain profiles. You can see here that, okay, these are, this is the user license. And based on the user license, these are the different profiles you can access. So if you go to chatter field, these are the different profiles. So user license entitles a user to a different functionality within Salesforce and determine the profiles available to that particular user. 
if you wanted to go ahead and give a user additional features like a marketing user or an offline user, then we have something called as feature license. So user license is the normal license that we available, like we have a work dot only license, contact license, the different different user license are there. Feature license is basically when you wanted to give a particular more permissions to a user, like marketing, making campaigns and all that, marketing an offline user. So then we're going to go ahead and need the feature license. Then we have something called as a permission set license. So if a particular user wants some additional licenses which are not part of the user license, then we are going to give him the permission set license. So these are the three different types of license, user license, feature license, and permission set. So user license is the normal licenses that you see here. These are the different kinds of their user license available. Then a feature license is basically to give a certain feature like marketing or um, access or something like that. Then it is a feature license. Permission set license is if you wanted to give, provide a user with access to certain features which are not covered under the user license, then they will be given the permission set access. Most important point here is the sales force builds the organization based on the number of licenses, not based on number of user licenses or anything like that, but how many licenses they, say they have bought from Salesforce. Then we have, so these are the different kind of licenses. Next we have is the currencies and conversion rates. So currency settings are the organization wide within Salesforce. So like whatever the organization has picked the currency, that is what the currency settings for the user or for the company will be. So as you can see here, if you go back to the company, So there is something called as allow the support to activate multiple currencies. So basically, if your country, as I already told you, if your company is have different, different, uh, um, different, different, uh, co like across the world, then they can set up this multiple currency. But in order to set up multiple currencies, they have to send an email to the sales force telling them, hey, I needed to have the multiple currency set up. But usually. You can't get them by default. You have to specifically email Salesforce people asking them for the access. So there are two different types of currency modes. One we have is the single currency. And the other one we have is the multiple currency. So single currency, basically you set the organization wide currency locales for your company and other Salesforce user will not be able to use their individual currency preferences. So if Salesforce has already, if, set, if my company has already set up only single uh, currency, then if I am in India, I won't be able to change it, to change that currency to something else. Okay, or if I am in Australia, I will not be able to change it to something else because I am, my company has set up for a single currency. Multiple currency organization, basically you, your company had basically set up one currency, but it has enabled multiple currencies. So if you are in India, you can switch to, the, to that particular currency. So whatever reports that you're going to generate will be based off of your user's preference. Okay, will not be based off of the company's setting but will be based upon of the user settings. Any questions, guys? Okay. So the next thing is, if you go back to the company, the physical ear. So what is this physical ear? Physical ear, every company has its own physical ear. Generally, you can set some companies have from uh, April to March or something. So you can change what is what is your physical year for the company. You can set up here physical years. You can change from 
uh, February to whatever the ending month. So that is, you can set up your business hours. If you wanted to set up all your business hours, like um, time zone or anything like that, then holidays, Christmas and everything, you can set up your holidays here. Language settings, what languages, if, if let's say your company has uh, not select, only selected these three languages, then users will only be choose from, can will be only be allowed to choose from these languages. They'll not be able to pick any other languages if your company has only given access for these three languages. Okay. So go back to the physical year. So the physical year settings in Salesforce can, so there are two types of, so one is the standard physical year, where is basically it's going to be a 12 month period and then there is a custom physical year. This is a little bit more complicated. So by default, the physical year settings in Salesforce uses the Gregorian calendar year, which is basically a 12-month structure. Uh, you can set up from January 1 to ending of December 30, 31, or if or any any other uh, month. And then, the, uh, so let's say March to March or April to March or whatever, then 12 months you can set up. Those are the standard physical years. Uh, let's say if your physical year starts in like April of 2015 to the end of March of 2016, you can set up through this. But if you have like a custom physical year, you can specify, okay, which you can specify like a 13 weeks period. So let's say if, you're, if your uh, physical year is not of 12 months, if it's of 13 or more than that, then you can set up those in a custom physical year. You can define them here. Then you have the language settings. So language settings basically allow you to specify the acceptable language that can be used within the Salesforce application. So what languages you are able to put it, you can put it here. And uh, let's say we have, we, let me go back and remove and put it here. So let's say I've only selected German, uh, English, German, Spanish, and French. So what happens is if any users will be only be able to pick from these four languages when it's, if they wanted to change it to their own preference. Okay, they won't be able to pick anything else because my company has only specified these four languages while setting up their CRM application. User interface and the browser. So Salesforce currently has two user interface themes. One is the classic theme, and then we have is the new theme. So, the browsers that the company, the Salesforce supports is the Internet Explorer, Firefox, Chrome, and Safari. So these are the different, different browsers the company supports, uh, use Salesforce supports. So now the most important thing is we're going to go ahead and look at the user interface. So any questions on the uh, related to the setup menu and the company profile? Okay. Guys, if you have any like doubts or anything like that, please let me know so I can um, change my pace. So now what we're going to do, uh, Deepika? Yes, ma'am. Uh, sorry to interrupt. Uh, I just, like, you know, in the certification, like, what questions we can expect on these topics? Can we cover that also, or so, it's going okay. to be different? No, no, no. So these, what I covered, like, uh, company profile, these are some of the questions that might come. So how you can change. So if, okay. So let's, let me give you an example. So let's say you were in the company profile, okay, company um, language setting. So the question might come is, uh, if your display language is, is in English, Spanish, and German, uh, will the user will be able, based on his preference, will be he able to change change it to a different language besides these? So these kind of scenario-based questions they might come. Okay, so they might say if your login uh, uh, if your login IP ranges is from this range to this range, if a user tries to access it from somewhere else. Will you be able to allow access to it or not? So you have to pick some options, all those kind of things. So there are these kind of 
questions might come. Questions won't be like a straightforward, it'll be more like a scenario based, but you know how to change few things. Uh, that kind of questions you can expect. So what we have covered so far, you can expect some one or two questions in the exam from that particular topic. Okay. Okay, thank you. So the next thing we're going to do is the user interface. So let's go ahead and uh, look at some of the user interface, what each of these options does. Some of them are self-explanatory. So if you wanted to modify the organization user interface, these are some of the options that you have. So let's look at the enable the collapsible sections option. So this is, you can see here, the first option we have is the enable collapsible sections. So what this particular option does is, if you wanted to go ahead and when you are in a particular record, so let me open an object here and uh, let me open some of the records, okay? Let me go to the accounts. So this particular section enables the user to either collapse or expand the sections on the record detail page. So this is the record detail page we have. And I'm trying to look for something which has a related list information. So let me go ahead and put something else because Okay, so this is good. So if I go ahead and change the enable collapsible sections and hit the save button, let me go ahead and click on this record detail page. Okay, let me create another user and see if that works because Guys, give me a minute. Let me go ahead and create a user first and let's see because we are in system admin, let me go ahead and create a different user. In order to create, you know, click on new user, provide all the information.
and user license Salesforce. And then it's going to be a standard user with the save button. Okay, so let me go to the accounts. Click on all accounts. Let me see. Hey Sakina, can you tell me where it is? I was just looking at it. It seems that on the page layout section properties, you have got to check the uh, display section header on, and then that's when the black. Okay, 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 okay. Slow down, slow down. So page layout, which one you want me to click on? Yeah, it's the page layout. There should be a section. Oh, okay, so, uh, okay. So let's see if I go to the. Yeah, if, if that has to be checked, like display section header on, is it checked? Display under section properties. Under section properties, it, um, there are the section properties. I don't see your section property. Those are the buttons though. Oh, we have to edit the page layout, right? But we don't have access to modify the page layout. Yeah. Oh, it's, it should be there because that is controlled through the user interface, right? Right. It, it, it seems that should be turned on for it to yeah. lack of show up. Um, Jeez, does that. Let me see. Even there is another thing, I may be missing something here, uh, like the quick create button, if you see here. Do you see a quick create button? I don't even see that. Oh. So let me go back to the user interface and see what they have.
Oh, I'm, I think I'm logged in as well. Yeah. user interface now let's go to the page layout you were talking about the page layout let's go to the accounts page layout click on the edit should be in the same huh there should be sections um, section properties properties of a section of course Where do you see it? Um, did you know there's layout properties up there? To, can is there a way to go to section property? Layout yeah. properties. Uh, no. No, that's not the one. Custom console. Just Record type. Let's look at some of the other and see what because we changed the setup thing. It got changed based on that one. Oh, we, it's not enabled. Okay, even if you enable it. Yeah, it was when I enabled it. I didn't enabled. We didn't see that, right? Enable collapsible side browser. Let's see the enable over details page. So if you go to the over details then what's going to happen is so if you go to faces Okay, so this is what, if you go to this, um, th this is what the hover details does. So if you hover your mouse, it kind of opens this menu of that particular information about that particular item. So if you go to this one, it opens the information for that particular case. Like if you go to Edge Communications, it gives you a quick view of how the Edge Communications looks like. So if I go back and change that information, do not enable it. So right now it's enabled. So if you go ahead and... Uh, remove it and enable, enable should be unchecked now if you go back again to the particular user let's say if I go to the accounts here and if I click on this I do not see any information so what I did is I I unchecked that checkbox where it says enable the hover details so that is one of the things that you can do through the user interface Enable over details. So maybe this enable collapsible section, maybe this was something to do with the older theme or something, but I have to take a look into it. I don't want to waste time. Then your over details is basically if you wanted to go ahead and when you take a mouse over the record, it will give you a quick view of that particular record. That is this hover details does. Enable the related list hover links. 
options basically enables the related list hover links to be displayed at the top of the standard and custom object record detail page. So if you go back, To the so this is since this is enabled, if you go to the accounts, if you go to edge communications, so see you can see all the related list here. And what happens is when you take when you took your mouse over to a related list, it shows you the information related to that particular uh, related list. So related list is basically how this account object has relationship with these different different objects, contacts, opportunities, cases, etc. So this particular account object has relationship with these. Okay. So we have so now because what we have done is under the user details section we have enabled the under the user interface section what we have done is we have enabled the related hover list hover link. So if you uncheck this one. Now what will happen is if you uncheck and hit the save button, this time if you go over to this contact records and let me refresh it, if you go over to this related list, you do not see that. Okay, you do not see any information. So let me go back here, go to a particular edge communication. You do not see those uh, links where you can go ahead and pop up that information of the related list. So if you go back here and uncheck it, so if you go back and check it again, let me go back and check it again. This time what will happen is if I go back to the account record, refresh the page, you will see all those back and then you'll be able to access their information. The next thing that you can do through the user interface, they enable the separate loading of the related list. So what do I mean by that is, so if you go to the next one, you can see here and enable the separate loading of related list. So sometimes if you, if a particular record has a lot of related data, let's say if account object has 10 different opportunities and five different contacts. So in order to load everything on a single page, it will be time consuming and it will also affect the loading time because more data it has to pick up and display on the same page. So that's why it kind of decreases the, it increases the loading time of a particular record when it has too many related list information. So by clicking on this particular checkbox, enable the separate loading. So what will happen is when you're loading an account object, it will not load the related list immediately. Okay, it will wait for the main object to get loaded and then it will go ahead and load the related information related to that particular object. So let me go ahead. So firstly, it was unchecked. Okay, so what unchecked means what happens is when you go to the particular account record, it also opens up the other related information right away. Okay, you can see here all this other information has been also loaded along with when you loaded this particular object. But if you go back here and uncheck, and if you go back here and check this one, where you enable the separate loading, what will happen is, and if you go back here and uh, click on a particular edge communication, see, if it did not load it immediately. So if you go back here, let me go and show back you again since it's, let me make it more clear. Go to the user interface. Because since we have like a small related list, so you might not see the difference, but let me go ahead and pull another record. See, does it have? 
if you go to this accounts, click on one of these. Yeah, you do not see because it's like But basically what you might have gotten the point is when you when you do not want to, to enable the related list along with the main object, then you can check this checkbox. So what will happen is first it will load the main object. Once it is finished loading the main object, then it will load all the related data. Since the data that we are loading is very small, so it, the, we don't see the difference what is happening. But when you have like big data for a particular object, then you're going to go ahead and see all this information. Does that make sense? Yeah, Tatika. Okay. So similarly, we have this uh, enhanced list, enable inline editing. Inline editing is basically when you wanted to edit the data right there. So right now, if you if you go to a particular account object and it's not in the edit mode. Edit mode means you have not clicked on the edit button. That means it's not in the edit mode. What will happen is you can right away change the information here. So this is enable the inline editing. Okay. So if you go back here, you have enabled the inline editing. But if I have unchecked this checkbox, if I have any unable, if I have not checked this checkbox and if I hit the save button, what will happen is you won't be able to no longer able to edit a particular record. See, you now you can't do it. Okay, now I cannot. I have to go in the edit mode in order to change that particular setting. Okay, in order to go ahead and change the particular setting, I have to go back here. So let me go back. Deepika, I have a question. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Uh, uh, actually, you know, this enable inline editing here mm -hmm. in the UI level, if I have unchecked it, and in the code level, if I give it, will it work or not, Deepika? Like code level in the way what? In the coding, right, if I write like uh, enable inline editing, something like that. So if you're creating your own Visual Force page, it will not work. So this particular op option only applies to pages for like it won't work for user pages or Visual Force pages. Because for those okay. pages, you will not be able to control the layout. So okay. let's say you have created a Visual Force page and you are trying to edit the page because you have inline editing enabled, it will not work. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. <laughs> so that is what the inline editing does. So first thing is, So this is the enable inline editing. Let me go back and check it again. And the, another thing is with this enable inline editing, you will only be able to edit the records, edit the fields, which you can edit. There are some of the fields like roll, roll up summary fields, uh, which will have like a lock on them. Or let's say you will not be able to change the user, like the standard fields, like uh, modified by and all that kind of stuff. See, if I go back here, and if I go ahead and uh, uncheck this one, if I go back and uh, enable this one and hit the save button, only hit the save button here. What I mean is, let's say you are in this particular, you're not in the edit mode. See, now as you can see, did you see the loading time? So if See, now it's loading because remember that the, uh, the, we, we enabled the related list that, okay, when first the account should get loaded and then the related list. It took some time. Maybe when you have like a big record, then you will notice this further. But since it was a small one, you, 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 don't, you didn't see that. So what I meant by the in, in editing is if there are fields which you cannot edit, like um, this, you see this lock. See, even if you enable editing, you won't be able to change it. Like these are called the standard fields. Whenever you create an object, there are standard fields get created with that, like last modified day, created by, etc. So these have locks on them. Even if the inline editing is enabled, you still not be able to change these fields. So I can change any of these, but I won't be able to change the fields which have lock on them. Does that make sense? Yes, Deepika. Okay. 
So these are the different different you can play around with the user interface settings and you can change it. So now what we're going to do is so these are the rest of the user interface. As a homework, I will ask you to go ahead and look at each of these and see what each of these can do. Okay, so this is going to be an assignment for you to go through each of the uh, user interface checkbox list and see how they are affecting the uh, uh, how they are affecting the UI. Guys, give me like a five minute break and I'll see you in five minutes. Okay guys, so now what we're going to do here is, since I gave you an inf information on the company settings and all that, now we're going to go ahead and start working on our application. Since you do not want me to go through the recruiting application, I wanted to go ahead and create another application and through this application we're going to learn about the different parts of what Apex works and how does it work. So let's start here. So first thing what we're going to do is we are going to create a warehouse application and uh, as you know here, the warehouse application and uh, application is basically nothing but it will have a group of tabs. So you can see here that a Salesforce comes with application, standard application as well as the custom application that we are going to create. So, so these are the set of standard applications that Salesforce comes up with. And each of these standard application has these different different tabs associated with that particular application. So now what we're going to do is in order to create our own custom application, we are going to create and we're going to add some objects to that particular application. So as I already told you in the last example is in the last is uh, Salesforce is nothing but it's like a database. Okay, Salesforce is nothing but it's like a database. Everything in Salesforce is like a table. All the objects in uh, the table in the layman term is called as object in Salesforce and the uh, the columns of that table is called as the fields in the, in the case of uh, is a field in Salesforce. So there's a different nomenclature we follow when we are talking about Salesforce. So now what we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and create a warehouse application and uh, we will add some objects to that application. We will see how to create objects, how to create tabs, how to create fields for that particular uh, application. So first thing is, let's go ahead and create an app. Is everyone here? Yes, Deepika. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go back and create an application. So now tell me if it's a warehouse application, there are, we are going to create three different objects for that particular application. So.
So this is the name of our application. And inside of this application, we are going to create objects. And each of the objects will have different, different kind of fields. So in order to create an application, we're going to go ahead and look for app here. And under the build, you will see this app section. So under the build, you're going to go ahead and see the app section. So here it will ask, these are already the applications that Salesforce has given to you, app launcher, community, content, marketing, etc. These are the applications which Salesforce has given to you. And in order to create a new application, we will click on this new button. And this is going to be a custom application. So go ahead and hit the next button. Now, the name of the application would be warehouse application. And this is the app name. So what is this app name? Whenever you are writing the code, that, so this app label is basically a user-friendly name for an application. So you can have spaces in them, etc. But whenever you are, whenever you are doing the programming in the Salesforce, when you're going towards the Salesforce development, then you will not be using this app label. You will be using the API name for that application if you wanted to access the application. So if in my code I needed a warehouse application, I'm not going to use the API app label. I'm going to use the app name. Okay. So the description, you can say uh, whatever you wanted to describe is basically for your understanding or if any other developer or any other person comes, he will be able to understand what this application is for and then hit the next button. So this is a place where you're going to go ahead and insert the logo. Let's say if your application is related to, if you do not, if you wanted to use a company's logo, you can upload the logo here, but make sure it should be less than 20 kilobytes. It should not be more than 20 kilobytes. Otherwise, you will not be able to load it on in this page. So since right now, I'm not going to change anything. I'm just going to go ahead and hit the next button. Now, by default, you get the home tab. Remember, by default, you get this home tab. And these are the additional tabs that are related to your application. Okay, So these are the available tabs that Salesforce has already given to you. So what they're asking here is, do you want this particular application, the warehouse application, to have these tabs or not? So right now, we do not want any of these tabs. We will go ahead and create our own objects and own tabs. So we will leave it as it is and hit the next button. Now, these are the different kinds of these These are the different kinds of profiles that are available to you. These are the different kinds of the profiles that are available to you. The Salesforce has given to you. So they're asking us, do you want this application to be seen by all these profiles or not? Okay, do you want this application to be seen by all these profiles? Yes, we want our warehouse application to be accessed by all these profiles. So let's go ahead and hit the save button. So now what we have done is we have created a warehouse application over here. So now you can see here there is a warehouse application has been created. Okay, and that particular application only has one tab associated with it, which is the home tab, because we have not added any other tab, so that's why you only see the home tab here. Okay, so the next thing what we're going to do is, we are going to go ahead and create the objects for that particular application. So right now, application is just the, application is nothing but it's a group of tabs. Okay, and for warehouse application, the first thing that we're going to create is, these are the things we're going to create. Merchandise. So let's go back and create an object called merchandise. Merchandise. So that is going to be the object name. Object is nothing but the table. Okay. Object is nothing but the table here. So go to the set, setup, go to the objects and click on the 
build create objects. So here we're going to go ahead and create a new custom object. What is the name of the object? Let's say the name of the object is merchandise. The plural label will be merchandises. Start with a vowel, no. Description related to warehouse application. Now, do you want it to have the standard Salesforce help and training window for this particular object or not? Uh, you, yes, ma'am. I've, I've seen this thing that starts with a vowel sound. Why would they use that? Uh, I've seen that anything that start, starts with a vowel usually has that thing checked. Uh, is there any particular reason? No, they, no, there's, there's no, but they just created it. It's not like specifically if something is starts with AEIU, they ask you to check it. Otherwise, it's no. I don't know. It doesn't make sense, but they have it like, with the vowel. Nothing like a big reason why they have a vowel sound checkbox here. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, the next one we have is the, the the standard Salesforce help and training window. So every time you create an object, they gives you by default a help and training window by Salesforce. If you wanted to create your own help page, if you wanted to say this particular object is related to this, to access the fields of the object, if you wanted to create your own custom page, you can go ahead and click this checkbox and you can select whatever Visual Force page you want to link to, to this particular object. So right now we have not, we do not have any custom page of ours. So what we're going to do is we're going to leave it as it is and by default it will be using the standard page. Then you have is the record label, name label and format. So every time you create an object, it, it every time you create an object, it gives you one default field. Okay, like the record identifier. So that is what this record name would be. So since we are using the record name as let's say merchandise name, um, so we're going to leave it as it is. So by default, this there will be a field called merchandise name added to your object. And along with some standard fields, we will look at what are the standard fields of, of any object when we create. So this is what is the related, is the record name. So this is like an identifier. You can either have a auto number. Auto number is basically, it'll every time you enter a new record, this there will be, it'll be automatically given a number. So let's say you wanted to have a, it will start with whatever you wanted to start with, like a one, two or anything. And it will go ahead and every time you keep on adding the record to that particular object, this number will get implemented. That is what the auto number will do. So right now we are just creating a field with the name of merchandise name. Now optional features, allow reports. So what does this mean is, do you want this particular object we want this particular object to, to be available for reporting purpose. If yes, then you're going to check this checkbox. Allow activities. This is basically when you do you want it to en enable the activities to be created for this particular object, we will make it yes. Track field history. So let's say if you wanted to see the field history, like what values were, um, if you wanted to enable the field history, like if it changed or somebody changed it, if you want to enable, wanted to track, who changed what on that particular object, then you can enable it. Because if somebody changed the value, you wanted to know who was it, what was the previous value, what was the new value. All those things, you're going to go ahead and enable it here. Chatter groups, when we're going to talk about chatter, this will come into picture. Like if you wanted to have this object available in the chatter, then you can go ahead and use this checkbox. What will happen is in chatter, they will be able to create records under this object if this particular thing is checked. Object classification. So when these settings are enabled, this object is classified as an enterprise application object. And if these settings are disabled, then this will be considered as the, as the light application object. So what is the difference between the enterprise and the light application is? Enterprise is basically when you have created an object and when you wanted to connect that particular object to different objects, like you wanted to create relationships, reports, etc then you will make this object as an enterprise application. If you make this as a light, light application, it is basically for standalone purpose. It cannot connect with any other object because you won't be able to do much, much with that particular object, but it will be like a lightweight. Whereas the enterprise application, you will be able to connect with other different records. You can build relationships. So it's for the timing, we wanted to enable the sharing, API access, and everything on this object. So I have, by default, this are checked. Deployment status is in development mode or in deployed mode. 
So once we are ready and we once we want everyone to see this particular object, we have put this particular object into the deployed mob. Since we are, if we are not yet sure about the object, we are not yet sure if it's going to be part of the application or not or anything like that, then we will keep it under the development mode. There isn't be, right now we know that, okay, we want this object to be part of this application. We know what fields are going to be in that. So we are going to leave it in the deployed status. This is a new thing they have added recently search status. Now when this particular setting is enabled, users will be able to find the records of that object when they search. So if you wanted to go ahead and find a particular record belonging to this object, you will be able to use that through the search box. Means you will be able to access a particular record through the search box. Object creation options. So do you want to add notes and attachment related lists to a default page layout? Do you want to do that? Means if you wanted to have a area to, to attach notes and uh, attach notes and attachments for that object, you can do that. Then you have is launch new custom tab wizard. So what does this do is right now we are only creating an object. Okay, we have only created the object. But if you want to easily access the object with the help of a tab, then you will click this checkbox. Means every time you're going to go ahead and uh, click on this, so every time you go ahead and click on this uh, checkbox, it will ask you to create a tab for this object. So first thing is, so first is like if you do not want, if you do not want a tab to be created for that particular object, then this checkbox will remain unchecked. If you want a tab to be created with that object, then this is going to be remain checked. So the next step would be, it will ask you to create what kind of tab do you want? What is the style of the tab? So let's say if you wanted to have like a small icon of Apple, then you can select, it does not make sense, but it's just a simple way of Salesforce to make it more stylish, nothing, nothing big here. And uh, then hit the next button. So this is these different profiles. These are all the different profiles that Salesforce has given to you. By default, the visibility of the tab is default on. Okay. If you wanted to go ahead, default on means all these applications, or oh, sorry, all these tabs will be able to access the all these profiles will be able to access the tab. Okay, the tab we just created. If you do not want that particular tab to be visible, then you're going to go ahead and change it to default off. So that will happen is any users who belong to any of these profiles will not be able to access this particular uh, tab. Okay. Since we want every profile to be able to see the tab, that's why I'm leaving it as default on. Then go ahead and hit the next button. We will we'll know, we'll talk more about default on, default off when you're talking about profiles. Next thing we have is include tab. So these are all the different, different applications, the standard application the Salesforce has created, the site.com, the sales platform, etc. These, as you can see here, they are using the API name for these applications. They are not using the, these are, this is the API name. You can see here the applications. So this is our custom app. So these are the different apps that are available. Do you want to include this, the, the merchandise tab in all the applications? Or do you want it only to be added in the warehouse application? Since we only want this tab to be part of the warehouse application, I have unchecked the rest of the checkboxes and I've only enabled this one. And then we're going to hit the save button. So what we have done here is we have created this custom object and with the tab. So now when you are under the warehouse application, when you have selected the warehouse application, now you see two different objects home sorry two different tabs one is the home tab which is the default tab and then we have the merchandise so merchandises tab now this is now if you go back and click on new as i told you one we created this field when we were creating the object so this is one of the field and it is a required field so every you required field means they have this red bar next to it that means it's a required field you cannot save an object without providing the value for this particular field so this is how you create an object in Salesforce. Now, if you wanted to get a picture of the background, how the in background things are done, right now you only see one tab, one particular field is part of this particular merchandise object. But if you go to the schema builder, you will see some of the other fields are also present under the same object. So if you go to the schema builder and here, you look for an object called, let me go ahead and clear all. And if you look for an object called merchandise, you're going to see there are different 
there are three more fields present created by last modified by an owner so these are the three different fields no matter what kind of object you create salesforce will give you all these three fields these are called as the standard fields by the salesforce any questions no sir <laughs> okay now the next thing i will ask you guys is if you go to your mobile if you have mobile next to you i will request you to go to the salesforce account okay go to your, go to your salesforce account and you will be able to see this particular application and if you're logged in as me okay if you're logged in as like my account i don't even remember what's the password if you do you wanted to take a look at it or you already know how to access the on the mobile version how will it look like and uh, i'm logging in as myself i was creating the app along with you oh, so i i can just log okay so you can log into salesforce uh, either you can use the salesforce app or you can just go to login.salesforce type in on your browser and give your username and password you will be able to see like a hamburger sign try to see the how the application looks on the phone Okay. And if you wanted to go ahead and access it on the mobile, then you can download the app, Salesforce app, that and then you'll be able to access the application. the salesforce one app there will be salesforce one app you can go to the app store and you can download one this app and then you will be able to log into your salesforce account and you can see the application that you just created if you were creating along with me if no that's fine but you will still get an idea how things are how things looks on a mobile yeah, um i see the merchandises thing uh, there okay. Okay. When you click on it, do you see the new button? When you go to the merchandise, click on the merchandise. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And if you go to yeah, the, yeah. yeah, and if you click on the new, you should see this new field, and try right. to create a record like laptop or whatever. You create a record with it, and hit the save button. Then you will also be able to see the record. Oh yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I've never tried before on a mobile, so. Okay, good. Okay. Nick and Vishalini uh, and everyone, have you created the app or no? No, Deepika, I haven't created, but I'm just going through what you have done. <laughs> okay, okay. I don't have it. Okay, that's fine. Uh, what about Nick? Nick, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, are you able to uh, create the application by yourself and create yes, an object? I did create it. Okay. I did create it. So, so for some reason, my on my home, mm -hmm. it's not showing merchandise. So I have to sort of troubleshoot that. No, 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 no. But so this merchandise is the application I created. So okay. if you are not logged in as me, then you will not be able to see the merchandise application. See, this is okay. a custom application. This is the application that I created. But you will be able to see the rest of the applications which Salesforce has already created for you. Okay. Yeah, I okay. can see it in my. Uh, I can see it in my list of apps. Okay. Yes. 
which application, but you're not able to see merchandise application, uh, but uh, sorry, the warehouse application, you're not able to see, but you're able to see the rest of the application, right? Correct, yes. Okay, okay. The reason you're not able to see the, the warehouse one, because this is one that I created under my account. So as long as you have not created under yours, then you will not be able to see that application. Okay, very good. Okay. okay. What about others, guys? Is this something that you've already, you know about this? What we covered today, is, some, is it something new for you? Or you've already learned it? So I can fast pace things and I can go to the next topic or how do you want me to? Or is this... For me, all these are known topics, Deepika. What does that mean? Not sure. Oh, okay, you're not. You're, so you for me, like, okay, you've already. Yeah, this. Yes. Yeah, yes, Deepika. Who is it? Um, I, I don't know. Vishal. 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 Okay. 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 And what about Nasheen and Kiran? Are they one or another? Nasheen. Okay. Hey, this is Nasheen. Yes. Uh, I, I know all of these, but uh, I, I was just trying to, uh, I mean, I wanted to request you to, while you go along with uh, with this these sections, can we go like every weekend at the end of, like, you know, every Sunday, like, you can um, focus like last half an hour or 15, 20 minutes on the questions related to what you have taught um, for the certification uh, examination, that would really help, like, uh, you know. Okay. Okay. Uh, 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 yeah. I know so, what you're so saying. So because once, if you are done, if you say that okay, this is uh, this can come in certification or interview, hmm. then you know you lose. Uh, we lose track. Like you know, I write it down, and then it goes uh, like after two pages, one question, three pages, another question. So okay. if okay. we can just, I, I, if you 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 can, I can delegate myself to prepare. Uh, you know, select, uh, get the, all the questions and send it to you beforehand. And you can just like some of the questions are like easier to understand like whenever you look at the answers or the choices some of them are really confusing and unless you have a good uh, e concept it, it uh, drives you crazy every time you look at it if the and the uh, number changes or the verbiage <laughs> changes you know so okay, since okay. last two days I am struggling with some of them so I was thinking if we can do it it will help others as well as me Okay. And you okay. know, you can add to your curriculum for your future classes also. You know. Okay. It's, it's, so it's okay. a great help. Yeah. Okay. So what I will do is you send me all the questions that you have, and yes. Uh, yes. any every day whatever topics we cover, we will I will try to pull up the questions from that particular topic, and then we will go through those yes. questions. Okay. Uh, not even every day, like every Sunday or every time you finish a section, hmm. like today you taught us user setup. If I send some questions for that and then a custom and a standard object questions so okay. whatever uh, we can um, you know take out of it whatever yes. you have thought like then on Sunday like we can dedicate like half an hour or, or 20 minutes if we you know whatever you feel good is good enough then we can uh, learn along you know this, because that's our focus you know get certified and get a job so yeah. whichever question you think is good for interview you can focus on that also because otherwise it will be like we uh, you know like watching any other tutorial you know <laughs> so okay we uh, already have your uh, tutorial um, track um, uh, mm -hmm. videos so Okay. Okay. Um, I, okay. Yeah, that's, okay. That's, a good, Thank you. that's a good point. So you send yeah. me all the questions today. Yeah, I'll sure. I'll, I'll send yeah. you. Yeah, I'll send you before the end of the day today, and then we can discuss tomorrow. Every Sunday we dedicate like 15, 20 minutes or half an hour, because you know while uh, while we go through the questions, also you can go back to the application and show us. So it will stay in our brain forever. You know, even we go to work, we remember what. Okay, what. That's what we did, you know. So okay. it's okay. like very, okay. very practical. Okay. Okay? okay. Thank you. Okay. And what about Kiran? Do you have something to say? Uh, actually, I know these topics. Uh, mm -hmm. Can we get a list of the topics ahead of the class, like what you will be covering? Okay. Okay. I can. I can do that. Like for, from starting tomorrow, I can send you a list of topics that we will be covering in the class today. Okay. Okay. Then. Thank you. Thank you. Okay guys, so um, since we started late, I wanted to go ahead and finish this application today. It might take us half an hour more. 
uh, but let's just do it so that we have an application to be working around um, from the from the next tutorial so we can play around with relationships and all that but let's just have this application completed so first thing what we did is we created a merchandise object and we added a field called merchandise name now the next thing what we're going to do is we're going to add some more fields to this merchandise object and we're going to create another object so let's go ahead and we are going to add another field called price okay so what we do is we go to the merchandise so there are different ways of creating an object one is you can see here there is a quick access menu and when you click on this quick access menu you can see you, you can create fields for the particular object you can see the object for this particular you can create a new object etc and you can do this but this quick access menu guys you will only see it if you are inside of an object see right now we are inside of a particular tab that's why you're seeing this quick access menu once we are in the setup you no longer see that quick access menu so you have to be inside a particular object and then you can see this quick access menu and you can add fields to here so this is like a quick way of adding fields to a particular object another way that we have is through the schema builder so if you go back to the setup and you go to the schema builder section here this is another way of adding the fields to the particular object so let's say if i want if i have this merchandise and if i wanted to go ahead and add a particular field you can go ahead and add a add a field to this particular um, to this schema builder as well so let's say if you wanted to add a date field etc you just have to drag and drop that particular field on that object that you wanted to add to and then it will open this pop-up box where you can specify the name of the field, the label, etc. All this information you'll be able to specify. So this is another way of adding the fields. So there are three ways. One is, one is through the quick access menu. Second one is through the schema builder. And the third one that we have is this one where you go to the, um, you can go ahead and look for that particular object and then if you click on that object you can go ahead and add a particular field so if you scroll down there's a feed there's a section called custom fields and relationship so you can add the fields to a particular object through this way also so there are three ways i repeat one is going through the setup and if you go through in a particular object and then you will be able to see the quick access menu and in the quick access menu you have view fields view object and also you can create new fields so you can click here and it will open this particular page where it will add the field to this object. The name of the object is here. So this is one way. The second way is through the schema builder. And the third way is basically going to that particular object page and scrolling down at the bottom and where you see the custom fields and relationship, you'll be able to add this new object here. Okay. So now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add, you can pick whatever way you want and uh, you'll be able to have the fields available. So let's go ahead and click on the new object. So the new field for the merchandise object. So these are the list of data types that are available. So Salesforce gives you all these data types. So auto number is basically a system generated sequence number every time you basically add a record then automatically this number will get implemented. So it's an auto number, automatically it will get implemented for each new record. Formula, this is a read-only field. Remember that. It's a read-only field which basically derives the value from a formula. So let's say if you wanted to calculate something like, um, if you wanted to calculate how many days the object has been created. So it's like a formula, formula for uh, first, let's say uh, profit. Okay, let's say you wanted to have a field called profit, which will calculate the uh, profit. And how will you calculate the profit? Profit will be calculated based on the selling price and the cost price. So, sell, so selling price minus cost price multiplied by 100 is profit, right? That's what the profit is. So what you do is you define a formula like this and automatically based on what is the selling price of that unit, what is the cost price it will automatically calculate the value for that particular field so that is a formula it means when you have a formula that you wanted to put to generate a value for the field 
that is what this formula field will be and it's a read only field because since the value is automatically calculated you you can't you, it's a read only so means you will not be able to change the value for that particular field roll up summary since you can notice it's a graded field and i'll tell you why it's a graded field when we're talking about relationships so this is a roll up summary field then you have is a lookup relationship and master data relationship this these two is also two different types of field when we're talking about creating a relationship between objects we will cover these two, these three fields checkbox it's as self explanatory if you wanted to set a value as true or false it will be you can select a field called checkbox so let's say if under this merchandise if there is a um, checkbox for um, is it a um, like uh, is it available or no something like that if it is a field and if you wanted to have a checkbox for it you can do that currency anything to represents with money will be currency date if you wanted to store the delivery date or the shipping time or shipping date etc then you can use a field called date date time will also have date as well as time stamp associated that's a date time email if you wanted to capture the customer email for let's say you are selling your laptop to somebody then you wanted to capture the email address of the person and you can use this field to capture the email address geolocation is basically when you're talking with some uh, geographical locations of longitude and latitude especially in the case of maps google maps or something like that and you'll be able to use the geolocation number let's say you're capturing somebody's age or years of experience or um, number of items let's say in case of merchandise how many items some, some customer needs and that's a number field you can't say like i need 5.5 laptops okay so number is either 5 6 it's a whole number percent if you wanted to see the profit margin or anything like that you you can have a percent so these are the different kinds of values different types of data types okay different type kind of data because you come across different kinds of data in everyday life you come across somebody's weight some some units price you come across age you come across uh, percent all these kind of things so different types of data if you wanted to capture the customer's phone number then you have this field pick list is basically if you wanted to have a list of values you want to pick from so let's say if you wanted to ask the customer which state in us he is from so you can use a pick list where he will there will be a drop down of options and he will pick a particular state from that pick list uh pick list multi in the case of pick list the user will be only be able to select one field at a time whereas in the case of multi select pick list the user will be able to select multiple items from a pick from a drop down so let's say if he is asking uh, if if you wanted to specify something like um, a student works in his college and he is asked to choose what subjects he is interested in so he can choose multiple subjects computer english science etc so that's a multi select pick list text is just to capture a text information and it's a combination of letters text area if you wanted to store some like a, a 255 characters you will be able to store if you are using text area text area long is basically for up to this many characters so if you wanted to have somebody's um, like more information like a paragraph or whole description like a cover letter or something you can use the text area long rich is basically it's a if you wanted to add images and links then you will be using text area encrypted is something uh, in the encrypted form url if you wanted to specify the website url or any url it's, it's these are self explanatory okay so these are the different kinds of data types that you can choose from so the first thing what we are going to do is we are going to go ahead and uh, select a data type let's say one the next field that we are going to add to merchandise object is called the price field okay so what we are going to do the data type would be what guys so nick what will be the data type for a price field should be it should be currency yes very good so we're going to go ahead and pick currency here hit the next button and then field label would be price length it can only be 18 characters so total number of lengths should be 18 so it should be either 16 plus 2 means if you want to do total should be 18 it should be less than 18 okay so 16 and you can have two more on decimal if you're trying to add three you won't be able to do that because the maximum number of the total number of the length should be only 18 characters okay so the field name is price so as this is going to be the name which will be used during the coding 
description helped us let's say if you wanted to say the price so it helped us is basically when you hover your mouse over to this particular field it will give you a message saying price of the merchandise okay that is what your help desk will do is it a required field do you always want to ask the user to specify a value for this field if the answer is yes then we're going to go ahead and check this checkbox formula editor if you wanted to be calculated a field based on uh, a particular formula or a default value you wanted to give let's say the default value for a any price item would be $100 if you wanted to specify a default value you can do that otherwise hit the next one see it did not allow us the sum of the length of the decimal places must be an integer less than or equal to 18 so it should be always less than or equals to 18 so since i have it as 19 it did not allow me so hit the next button same here these are the app profiles and i'm allowing the access to all the profiles for this particular field this is the page layout i'm going to go ahead and add it hit the save button so now if you go back to the merchandise you will if you click on the new you will see two fields here and when you click on this help desk you will see this is going to tell you the price of the merchandise because we have added a help test for this particular field. So these are the two fields now we have added to your uh, merchandise object. The next thing that we have is the, if you wanted to add another field here, let's say we're going to use the quick access menu to add a new field. And this way I'm going to say, clicked on the quick access menu, hit the new button. The field name will be of quantity. So what will be the data type here? Nasheen, what, what data type I'm going to pick here for quantity? Number. Very good. So we're going to pick <clears throat> number here. Hit the next button. Field label would be quantity. Description, nothing required, no. If you have this unique, so see for a number field, there is an the option called unique, okay? That is basically if you do not want it to have a duplicate values, if you, if you may want to make sure that every time the record should have, it, you should not have a duplicate value for this particular field, you can check this checkbox. Okay? External ID, if you are trying to import records from an external system, so this particular, if you have set this as an external ID, then this field will act as a record identifier. So this will be basically, the, it will display the uniqueness of the records if you're trying to import from external system. So let's say you have some data available in a third party application and you're trying to import that data inside of your Salesforce org. So there are records and you have, you have some existing records in your Salesforce org. In order to maintain the uniqueness, this field will be taken into account and if there is already a value available for this field let's say one is already available in your organization data and you're trying to import another record which has the same value available for that data so that will be considered that a duplicate record so if you set this value as an external id so this particular field is the unique record identifier when you're trying to using the external system okay uh Deepika? yes ma'am is this going? Is this external ID is just an ID, or it's going to remove any duplicates? Because quantity you can have same value repeated, right? So that's what I'm saying. So see, for this particular field, it does not make sense. It is for this particular field, you do not want to send external ID. But there is something like a phone number, uh, uh, let's say, or um, a duplicate of name or something. Okay. So that will be considered as a duplicate, and then it will ask you, do you want it to? import that record it will be considered as duplicated or not so we ask you but this but this will only tell okay will specify is it a for this uniqueness of the field it will not it will not stop from importing but it will ask okay it will say that okay this is duplicate available do you still want to add it to the import list or not so does, does it make sense yes very okay. much thank you then hit the next button make it visible to all the profiles hit the next button and then hit the save button. So now what we have done is we have created a merchandise object with the fields. And if you take a look at it, you're going to see three different fields added for the merchandise object. So now you can go ahead and set up the values. Let's say computer 
So this now I'm creating a record. Okay. Now I'm creating a record. So let's say the price of the computer 400 bucks quantity one. Now I have created a merchandise record here. Now let's go ahead and create another record here just to set up the application. So this time I'm going to go ahead and use the schema builder to create. So let me first go ahead and create an object. And let's go ahead and create name of the object. Starts with a wobble, so this is going to be checked. This time, instead of saying invoice name, I'm going to say invoice number, and it's going to be an auto number. Okay, it's going to be an auto number means it will be automatically generated. So this time, I can say something like display format display format is how this number will be displayed so if you don't want four zeros you can change it to like one zero or something whatever so this is going to be the display format and what is the starting number do you want to start from one you want to start from 100 200 whatever you're going to specify you wanted to involve this in all these features it's in deployed allow the search and notes and i also wanted to have the tab associated so we're going to go ahead and hit the save button I'm going to select a particular tab style. You can pick anything from here. Hit the next button. Hit the next. We don't want it to include this app, this particular object in any application other than warehouse and hit the save button. So now we have created the Another application also we have created, which is the invoice application. And right now, it does not have any field. The invoice number is only one field which is available. But since it's an read-only field, it's like basically you can't provide the value for the field. It will automatically generate it by the system. So that's why you did not see it. But now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use a schema builder. And through the schema builder, I will be adding the fields of the invoice objects. So you will get an idea on how to add fields different different ways. So the field that I'm going to add is a status field and it's a pick list. So it's a pick list. So what I'm going to do is I'm drag and drop. Let me first select a merchandise object. Uh, this is a merchandise object. So I'm going to go ahead and select the other object here, which is the invoice object. And you can see here, this invoice object has all these four fields created by and last modified by owner. These are the standard fields you already seen in the merchandise case. Then you have an invoice number, it's an auto number. So on the right side, you see all the different data types. And on the right side, you see the, on the left side, you see the name of the field. So now what we're going to do is, we are going to go ahead and uh, add the fields to this. So the first field that I'm going to add is the pick list. So I'm just going to drag and drop, okay? So I'm going to just drag and drop this particular field here. The label, status, field name, Consider it as status two, description, help us if you want to do it. What are the values for this pick list? So the values would be open. Then let's say closed. Negotiating. And let's say pending. So these are the different, different values for the pick list. So pick list is nothing but a drop down you're going to have. And then what we're going to do is. Let me. So if you wanted to have the first value as a default value, then you can click on this. If you wanted to sort the values in alphabetical order, then you can check this checkbox. We don't want to do any of these. So hit the save button. Now, if you go back to the invoices, let's say if you go to the, if I'm in the merchandise, if I'm in the, oh, where's my application? If I'm in the warehouse application, if I go to the invoices, click on the new, you do not see that particular field over here, the field that we just added. Can you somebody tell me why do we do not see that field, the field that we created? Anybody? Because the access was not in edit 
Okay, one person. You have to click on you. You want me to click on? Okay, so okay, let me pick one person from here. How about uh, Kiran? I think you have to edit it. Then only you'll be able to see it. How? How edit it? No, it's actually, uh, I think it's uh, automatically generated. So once you add one record, then the first number would show up. No, 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 no. See, I added the status field, right? Oh, okay, sorry, I thought the invoice number. That was yeah, invoice okay. number, I know it's an auto number, that's why. But what about the status field? Did you guys it because of the FLS? What is FLS? Field level security? Uh, you, yeah, tell me, you tell me, you tell me. So how should I enable it? Nick, do you know the answer? Um, <clears throat> I think you have to go into um, into the object. Isn't there a, I think there's a security enabled uh, device here. I'm not sure. Okay. I have uh, to play around with it a little bit. Sorry. Okay. Okay. What about Vishali? Uh, that's what the pick I think then that, that particular field doesn't have the FLS so that is why it is not visible. So how should I do that? How should I enable the FLS? Uh, maybe we should go to the particular object and go and see the field and then do it in the UI. Can you can you tell me exactly how to do it step by step? Create object invoices. Okay, so you're telling me to go to the objects then invoices. Okay, what else? invoice and there you could see the field status. Where is the field Keep status? Out. You have below customer fields and relationships. Okay, the status field? Yeah. Okay. Click on that and okay, then? Click on that and then you set field and security. Okay. Then? Oh, it's already given the pick on. So what is the answer? I think you need to add it to the page layout. Very good, very good, very good, very good. Exactly. There's nothing to do with the security. We didn't. We enabled all the permissions and everything. So what we have to do is we have to go under the security. So anytime you add a field through the schema builder, they will not be added to the page layout directly. So you have to edit the page layout. Page layout is the lookout of this page, the look and feel of the page. So we have to go to that particular object that you're going to change the layout. Then there is a button called as, okay, go to the new, and then there's a button called as layout here. Edit the layout. So you go ahead and click on this edit layout, and then you will see the field here on the top. So if you wanted to add this field to the, to the object, then what you have to do is you have to bring this particular field and add it somewhere here. Then go ahead and hit the save button. This time, if you go to the if you go back to the invoice record and if you click on one of these new then this time you will be able to see the status field because you did not because whenever you add fields to the schema builder this is the problem you have to manually come to the page layout and set up the fields here let's set up the field man drag and drop the field to the page layout and then you'll be able to see it is that clear yes so Going back, let's go ahead and quickly add the next rest of the fields. So you will go to the schema builder. And select the invoice object. Okay, so now they have any, any other options that I need to add? No. Okay, so now tomorrow what we can do is we are going to go ahead and... Uh, uh, Deepika, you want to add invoice amount here? Okay, if you want me to, I can do that. Just later on if we need to do approval process or what. Yeah, so we can do that if you wanted to do. Schema builder, it's going to be, let's say, invoice amount you want to do. We can pick up the uh, elements, go to the element section, and then there's something called as currency you can pick up and we can name it as amount field name is amount and hit the save button so the field got added now you have to go to the layout of the page 
in voice layout. See, these are the recent items. You can go from here as well. And then you can go ahead and drag and drop the amount thing over here. So this is going to be the amount as well. So now if you go to the invoices, you will see the amount field also added to the, to the invoice uh, page. So this is what we have created. So what we have learned today is we first of all went ahead and looked at how to control the login, how to give the login access uh, based on the IP, time, etc. Then we looked on the company's information, how to change the company information, physical years, holidays, etc. Uh, locale, all those things. Then we also saw how to uh, change the user interfaces, how the user interface look and feel can be changed. So I will, the assignment from me for today would be, you go through this user interface and uh, you go ahead and add all these, you go ahead and play around with these settings and see what each of these means. So you can go ahead and change the user interface, try playing with this and kind of get an idea what each of the checkbox does. And then we also learned about how to create an app, how to, how to create an object, what are the different kinds of data types available, and how to create the feeds. Tomorrow, what I'm going to do is, first of all, I'm going to talk about the relationships. Then we're also going to see um, the questions related to the admin exam. If there is anything that I see, what we have covered so far, and if they are part of it, then we're going to go ahead and discuss those. And we're going to talk about the uh, roll-up summaries, look-up relationship, master detail relationship, and all that kind of stuff. Is that good, guys? Yeah. Sounds okay. good. Okay, did you enjoy this class? I hope it was something that was helpful. You learned something new. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, okay. So uh, I'll send you the recorded sessions because I need to first convert it to an MP4 and then I'll be able to share with you guys. Uh, okay.